The academic paradigm in regards to the chronological history of man, the claimed, continued, warts and all documented, completely linear journey to the modern day from a claimed birthplace upon the continent of Africa to the caves of Europe and Asia, becoming post-Ice Age neoliths, all somehow mysteriously capable of incredible feats, all mysteriously deciding to build similar structures in similar ways of similar size, with no explanation even attempted. All this claimed as having happened and fully known of without a single gap. An institutional castle built from nothing but sand. The Bering Strait is home to a theory of the same name, crucial to this evolutionary tale of human development. Yet what resulted from research done by a handful of highly capable individuals of integrity? It is a site which proves beyond doubt that the Bering Strait theory is nothing but a lie, one which those who profit from this current paradigm due to steel have been revealed spending great efforts in protecting it from the truth, a truth mutated into a perceived conspiracy. The Bering Strait was a frozen landmass, connecting continents, crucial in explaining primitive man's travel across them. A modern historical paradigm, not only explaining the migration of man to the rest of the world, but it must have been at a particular specific time in history to fit currently funded scholarly accepted opinion on the development of man. Virginia Steen McIntyre, however, found fossils, stone tools, and strata dating back 200,000 years earlier than academically accepted. She was told to either repeat the excavation and provide fitting dates, or her findings would be thrown out. She stood by her research and eventually lost her funding. However, it seems that Virginia had a knack for studying areas which are clearly, if historical teachings be inaccurate, highly controversial areas of archaeological interest, for she was seemingly a thorn in their sides with her other previous research and subsequent discoveries too, specifically those made at other sites such as Huyatlaco, an archaeological site in the Valsaquillo Basin near the city of Puebla, Mexico. After excavations in the 1960s, the site became notorious due to geochronologist analysis from the research done in conjunction with Steele and others also indeed indicated that human habitation at Huayatlaco dated to as far back as 250,000 years ago. Wikipedia states regarding these finds, quote, these controversial findings are orders of magnitude older than the scientific consensus for habitation of the New World, which generally traces widespread human migration to the New World to a maximum of 13,000 to 16,000 years ago." End quote. Although these two sites are a considerable distance from one another, they are crucial for the chronological storyline of modern claims regarding timelines of human migration slash habitation dates which they want to be perceived as far back within antiquity as being 13,000 years ago. However, this evidence proves that humans had already established these landmasses more than a quarter of a million years ago. Although Wikipedia predictably attempts retorts to these claims, to their credit, they have listed a vast array of incredibly talented, highly qualified specialists, along with their own testimonies and personal investigative conclusions supporting the work of Virginia Steele McIntyre. It's also to its credit that they note the harassment received by these pioneers who literally threw the rules out of the window in pursuit of the truth. Quote, Steen McIntyre claims that some of the original research team were harassed, viewed as incompetent, or saw their careers hampered due to their involvement in such a controversial and anomalous investigations." End quote. She would eventually lose access to funding, lambasted for her fines and claims never ceasing. Regardless of these attacks, we find Virginia and the many other courageous individuals commendable in their search for the truth and they are undoubtedly areas which they have debunked with artifacts and dates, evidence so passionately argued as lies, it is almost complementary to her ability. This controversy is to us undoubtedly highly compelling.
When we first explore the suppressed yet very real secret passageways littering the Sphinx base and structure, we were confronted with compelling evidence to suggest another Sphinx existed on the other side of the African continent in Zinder. Not only were there still existing remnants of this once spectacular structure, but there also remains the clearly recognizable and notoriously erosion-resistant accompanying pyramids. However, what some may find astonishing is that exactly 6,000 kilometers to the east, in a place known as Baluchistan, Pakistan, another sphinx can also be found, clearly of a similar antiquity. Supporting the suspicion claimed many times on our channel that a civilization which far preceded the ancient Egyptians actually built these amazing pyramids, known as the Sphinx of Baluchistan. Many funded academics have strongly denied the possibility of this familiar-looking formation being of man-made origin, and many attempt to claim that its familiar shape, along with the surrounding environment's artificial appearance, is mere coincidental, and that the entire area is just a natural formation. These conclusions, made with no official archaeological investigations ever being undertaken at the site. Thankfully, however, an equal number of individuals who have actually visited this site, most self-funded, have actually concluded the complete opposite. Graham Hancock being but one individual who has concluded that the site is indeed a very ancient sphinx, quite possibly dating back to the last precision of Leo some 12,500 years ago. As Graham's website put it, quote, the Sphinx appears to be decked up in a headdress that closely resembles the Nemus headdress of the Egyptian pharaoh. The Nemus headdress is a striped headcloth that covers the crown and the back of the head. It has two large conspicuous flaps which hang down behind the ears and in front of the shoulders. The Sphinx has horizontal groove across its forehead, which corresponds to the pharaonic headband that holds the Nemus headdress in place. One can easily make out the contours of the reclining forelegs of the Sphinx, which terminate in very well-defined paws. It is difficult to see how nature could have carved out a statue that resembles a well-known mythological animal to such an astonishingly accurate degree." End quote. We find it disappointing, yet not surprising, that many individuals within modern academia accredited with many titles to their name and thus much educational responsibility, would defend a paradigm regardless of investigative support, a highly unprofessional yet repeated practice across many fields. The Sphinx is perceived by nearly all concerned as a symbol of protection, a guarding force which was often erected at sacred or highly important sites. And the Sphinx of Baluchistan is no different appearing to be guarding a temple-like structure nearby. Many have concluded that the Baluchistan Sphinx temple site actually retains clear evidence of pillars, a temple entrance, an elevated sculpted structure to the left of the entrance, along with much more interesting geology in the surrounding area. Is the Baluchistan really just a natural formation? If so, why has no official investigation been undertaken? It is clearly a very controversial archaeological site, and one we find highly compelling. An unexpected discovery was recently made by a group of scientists while exploring an as-yet-unmapped section of the Pacific Ocean just off the coast of Hawaii, they stumbled upon something incredibly intriguing. During the exploration of the summit of an undersea mountain around an area known as the Papahānaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument, a protected conservation area encompassing some 580,000 square miles northwest of Hawaii, researchers stumbled upon and briefly along a possibly incredibly ancient yellow brick road. It's the road to Atlantis, one scientist has quipped to the press jovially not realizing how accurate he may one day be found to be. Quote, Our exploration of this never-before-surveyed area is helping researchers take a deeper look at life on and within the rocky slopes of these deep ancient seamounts. Previous expeditions aboard the Nautilus research vessel have unearthed a plethora of eerie aquatic anomalies. End quote. 
What makes the discovery interesting is its seemingly artificial nature, appearing to indeed be the legendary yellow brick road to Atlantis, one made of bricks laid next to each other in a near-perfect fashion, many of which exhibiting 90-degree angles. Others involved in the mission have also been quick to discredit the discovery, however, claiming it is nothing other than a natural formation. Quote, At the summit of Nootka Seamount, the team spotted a dry lake bed formation, now identified as a fractured flow of hyaloclastite rock. The remarkable brick-like divisions between the rocks are likely the coincidental result of heating and cooling stresses from multiple volcanic eruptions over millions of years. End quote. There are many ancient antediluvian ruins which have been discovered and indeed shared here upon our channel, many so undeniably artificial that their sheer existence due to the geological data and thusly the dating of their submersion continue to pose historical chronology a real problem, and we feel if further investigation of this site could possibly be undertaken in the future. This explanation of it being a natural formation could one day be perceived as a dismissal of a truly ancient, yet also clearly, yellow brick road. Could the yellow brick road to Atlantis, just like that of the Bimini Road, one day be found to be a true road? Well, we find such possibilities highly compelling. Our mission upon our channel is to compile and present enough evidence of the existence of a past, highly capable, technologically advanced ancient civilization that once flourished here upon our planet, that it not only proves their existence beyond reasonable doubt, but vindicates all those who have either lost careers, funding or worse, just for telling the truth. Our intention is to display to the world that a civilization once lived here on our planet that not only mastered the art of stone masonry, but quarried, moved, and built with stones of such gigantic weights, not only do their activities escape modern explanation, but have been deliberately ignored, covered up, and denied by an academia who claim to have all the answers. There are many areas of the planet which still possess many of these compelling artifacts, not only supporting our premise and conviction, but baffle all who try to explain them. And although, predictably, rarely shared by academics the world over, one of these ancient places is known to the modern man as Italy. Seemingly littered with not only polygonal masonry, ancient pyramidal structures, multi-ton lintels and archways, but contains countless other compelling, extremely ancient yet surviving features which not only indicates the existence of this past civilization, but have been investigated by a number of alternative antiquarians throughout the eras, who, after in-depth analysis, have come to predictably startling conclusions in regards to their age and, indeed, possible origins. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient sites, one of which being the Cyclopean Wall, which still surrounds the ancient Acropolis of Alatre. And indeed, the astonishing polygonal masonry, which makes up the apparently Greek-constructed Necromantion, a place not only proven due to the polygonal architecture to undoubtedly predate this academic explanation, but also, thanks to our own study of the site, has fingerprints left by a tool within the main chamber, said to be the passageway to the underworld of Hades that we have identified and linked to a number of other unexplained sites found throughout the world. However, this coverage of the Italian relics we have so far explored is but a fragment of what is actually hidden among the winding streets and rolling hills of Italy. Alternative researchers, most notably Giuseppe Lugli, have carried out studies of the unexplained polygonal techniques, which can still be found existing within Italy. The ancient fortifications and polygonal walls, which were researched and initially noted by Giuseppe, include Alatri, Norma, Arpino, Assini, Saracena Gate, Cosa, Alba Fusens, Segni, Pigra, Blera, Lazio, Bomarzo, Latium, San Felice Circio, Latina, Chiusi, Etruria, Toscania, Vitrala, Viterbo, Monte Albano. Sovana, Toscana, Nardo di Pace, 
Tirna, Lago di Pitti Luca, Orvieto, Umbria, Tuscany, Marema, Sorano, Syracuse, Sicily, Val di Saviore, Serviteri, Savignano, and so on. As Richard Cassero puts it, a modern researcher of these enigmatic ruins, quote, the countryside around Rome is littered with relics of a past more or less remote. One feels almost a continuity there, between the ancient and the modern world, with the ancient Roman ruins being almost a familiar presence, as if part of the natural landscape. Yet one also finds there remains of a much older and mysterious past. Massive cyclopean walls encircle towns and villages, their stones darkened by the passing of centuries and millennia. One can never get used to them, so strange they are in their interlocking geometries and so different from the familiar contours of Roman and medieval walls. They loom as a relic from an entirely different past of which we know almost nothing." End quote. And as mentioned, although we have only personally covered the Cyclopean walls surrounding Alatri, similar ancient fortifications can seemingly be found enclosing countless other ancient ruins all over Italy. The small towns of Sutri, Emilia, Pelestrina, Ferentino, Segni, Cesa, Veroli, and Arpino, all in the province of Frosinone, Norba, Cori, and Circe, Cortona, Cuma in the province of Latina, Emilia in nearby Umbria, as far as Ancedonia, Orbitello, and Roselle in Tuscany and Alba Fucens in Abruzzo, are entirely surrounded by Cyclopean walls, surviving to this day in various states of preservation, an indication of a fear these people had of some form of outsider. The stone walls, some of which constructed from truly gigantic blocks, each weighing many tons, are as finely fitted together as the many other mortarless ruins found elsewhere the world over, such as within ancient Peru. But it is their near-impossible acute angles and interlocking corners that cause the greatest of amazement, that just like the polygonal masonry found all over the world, was created as if each stone was individually carved to be a piece of a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These features, along with their gigantic scale, are relics not only overlooked by the thousands of people who visit Italy each year, but, as we have previously discussed, are overwhelming evidence of an ancient civilization far more capable than any of the well-studied ancestors that academia claim as the original builders. These remnants are undoubtedly evidence of a past civilization that were not only vastly more proficient in masonry than even the modern man, but were also obsessed with building enclosed fortifications, as if to avoid some form of outside invader or possible natural threat. Who built ancient Italy? Why did they build with such focus on fortification? How old are these relics? We feel that due to their inexplicable nature, they are undoubtedly relics left by a now lost civilization, yet continue to be ignored by an academia who deny this people's past existence. Regardless of these denials, we find ancient Italy highly compelling. <laughs>